Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. In today's episode, I want to ask the question, why does Britain own the Falkland Islands? Virtually everybody in the UK has heard of the Falkland Islands because in 1982, Britain actually went to war with Argentina over these islands. And the reason that there was a military conflict between the two countries is that the Falkland Islands are located around 300 miles from Argentina, but around 8,000 miles from the UK. And for at least the last 100 years, Argentina has claimed that the Falkland Islands should be part of Argentina. So in today's video, I want to establish exactly why the Falkland Islands are under British control and what the big attraction of the Falkland Islands is. So I'll give you some details on the islands themselves. We'll have a look at the history as to how these islands became a colony of Britain. We'll talk about the economy of these islands, what raw materials and assets they possess. We'll have a look at some of the details of the Falklands War in 1982. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think is likely to happen to the Falkland Islands. The Falkland Islands is a collection of islands located around 300 miles off the coast of South America, with the nearest country being Argentina. The archipelago, which is a fancy word describing an area containing a group of islands, is spread across an area of the South Atlantic Ocean spanning around 4,700 square miles and comprises 778 individual islands, the largest of which are called East Falkland and West Falkland. The total landmass of the two main islands and the hundreds of smaller islands form a land area roughly the size of the US state of Connecticut. As a result of their exposed location in the sea and the temperate climate, the island's vegetation is low and dense and there are no trees at all on any of the islands. As a result of the lack of shelter and natural food sources, there are no indigenous land mammals on the Falklands. However, the islands are home to over 65 species of birds, including albatross, Falkland pipits, and peregrine falcons. The Falkland Islands are also breeding grounds for several million penguins, mostly rockhoppers, Magellanic, and gentoos. However, a small number of king and macaroni penguins also land on the island. Dolphins and porpoises are common, and southern sea lions and elephant seals are also numerous. The land of the Falkland Islands does not contain any significant mineral deposits or oil, and the main source of naturally occurring food is squid, which are abundant in the local waters. Historically, the Falkland Islands were uninhabited prior to their colonisation by European settlers. The first recorded landings on the island were by John Strong in 1690, who named the channel of water between the East Island and the West Island, Falkland Sound, in honour of Viscount Falkland, the treasurer of the navy who sponsored his journey. And as a result of this, the islands were named the Falkland Islands. The islands remained uninhabited until 1764, when the French landed on East Island, established a settlement, and named the islands Ile Munale, and Argentina referred to the islands as Islas Malvinas, which is a derivative of this name. In 1765, the British landed on West Falkland and established their own settlement, and the following year France surrendered its claim on the Falkland Islands to Spain. The British and Spanish settlements coexisted on the islands until 1774, when Britain's new economic and strategic considerations led it to voluntarily withdraw from the islands. As a result of this exit, the West Falkland Island was left abandoned, and in 1806, the Spanish governor of East Falkland evacuated the island as a result of Britain's invasion of Rio de la Planta during the Napoleonic Wars. Between 1806 and 1832, the islands remained largely uninhabited, apart from the occasional fishermen. However, in 1833, the arrival of British forces reasserted Britain's rule over the Falklands. In response, the Argentine Confederation protested against Britain's actions, and Argentine governments have continued this argument ever since. In 1840, the Falklands became a crown colony, and Scottish settlers subsequently established an official pastoral community. The town of Port Jackson on the East Island was renamed Stanley and officially became both the seat of the government in 1845 and the capital of the Falkland Islands. The island's geographic location, close to Cape Horn, made it ideal for ship repairs and the wrecking trade, which is the business of buying and selling shipwrecks and their cargoes. Aside from this trade, commercial interest in the Falklands was minimal. Economic growth began only after the Falkland Islands Company successfully introduced Cheviot sheep for farming purposes. Over the next hundred years, the Falkland Islands Company dominated the trade and employment of the islands, and the business benefited greatly from the wool trade with the UK. 
In the first half of the 20th century, the Falklands served an important role in Britain's territorial claims to subantarctic islands and a section of Antarctica. The Falklands also played a minor role in the two world wars as a military base aiding control of the South Atlantic. However, after the end of World War II, the Falklands economy was affected by declining wool prices and political uncertainty resulting from the revived sovereignty dispute between the United Kingdom and Argentina. Simmering tensions between the UK and Argentina increased during the second half of the century when Argentine President Perón asserted sovereignty over the islands. The sovereignty dispute intensified during the 1960s, shortly after the United Nations passed a resolution on decolonization, which Argentina interpreted as favorable to its position. In 1965, the UN General Assembly passed Resolution 2065, calling for both states to conduct bilateral negotiations to reach a peaceful settlement on the dispute. Talks between the UK and Argentina commenced, and in 1971, an agreement on trade ties between the Falklands and Argentina was signed. And as a result of this agreement, Argentina built a temporary airfield at Stanley in 1972. When Margaret Thatcher took over as the Prime Minister of the UK, she became concerned at the expense of maintaining the Falkland Islands in an era of budget cuts, and the UK considered transferring sovereignty of the islands to Argentina. However, by the early 80s, this idea was completely abandoned. March 19, 1982, opening day for a war in the remote South Atlantic. For that was the day a small group of Argentine civilians planted their country's flag on South Georgia Island, which along with the Falkland Islands to the west had been British territory since 1833. On April 2nd, Argentina's military invaded the Falklands, claiming them as Argentine territory to be known as the Malvinas. Ham radio operators helped get the word out. Approximately 9 p.m. 2. They believe to have come ashore in landing craft and then stormed the town of Port Stanley. Britain responded with a naval armada, including two aircraft carriers and the ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II, refitted as a troop ship. At stake was a group of windswept islands with some 2,000 people and many, many thousands of sheep. British troops went ashore on one of the islands that... On April 25th, British forces retook South Georgia Island, prompting this famous declaration by Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. We rejoice at that news and congratulate our forces and the Marines. British spirits rose again a few days later when a Royal Navy submarine sank the Argentine cruiser General Belgrano. Just days later, Argentina struck a counterblow by sinking the British destroyer Sheffield with an air-launched missile. British forces are tonight firmly established back on the Falkland Islands. On May 21st, the first British forces landed on the Falkland Islands and engaged in battle. On June 14th, the last Argentine forces surrendered. In all, Argentina lost more than 650 dead and Britain more than 250. And a third of a century later, the Falklands remain a British overseas territory, even as Argentina continues to press a claim it failed to win by combat. The Falkland Islands has a population of around 3,500 people, making it one of the smallest countries in the world. And I thought it'd be interesting to have a quick look at what the smallest countries actually are. In 2022, the smallest country in the world was officially recorded as being Vatican City, which, despite being in the middle of Italy, is its own independent state and has an official population of 799 people. The second smallest country in the world is Tokelau, with a population of 1,378. The third smallest country in the world, with a population of around 1,600, is Niuau. The Falkland Islands comes in at number four. Montserrat is number five. San Pierre Miquelon, number six. St. Bartholomew number 7, Nauru number 8, Wallace and Fortuna number 9, and Tuvalu is number 10. And the reason I wanted to share this data with you is that it's really difficult for countries of this sort of scale to be self-sufficient, to be able to generate enough food and income for everybody to be able to support themselves. The only exception to this being Vatican City because it's the head of the Catholic Church and therefore has a huge amount of wealth. 
But coming back to the issue of the economy of the Falkland Islands, as mentioned at the start of the video, the group of islands doesn't have any major natural resources. It doesn't have any oil or gas or gold or anything that could be highly valuable that could be exported in exchange for cash. The islands are also very exposed, so therefore quite windswept. They don't have any trees, so they're not growing any valuable agricultural products. And as a result of this, the main assets that the Falkland Islands has are its fishing waters and its land for grazing sheep. International law says a country has an exclusion zone of around 200 nautical miles of water surrounding its land. And fortunately for the Falkland Islands, the fishing waters are located on a spur of the Patagonian continental shelf, which makes these waters ideal for squid. Squid, also called calamari, is a cephalopod mollusk and a close relative of the octopus and cuttlefish. The squid's body consists of eight arms, two tentacles, and a large tubular-shaped body called the mantle. The mouth, or beak of the squid, is nestled in between the arms. There are over 300 species, ranging in length from one inch to six feet. Squid propel themselves through the water without the use of fins. Instead, they pull water in via a muscle called a siphon and push it out the other side creating movement and the equivalent of aqua jet propulsion. And the direction of the water flow can be reversed. Loligo is the generic name for several subspecies, all with variations in detail and most commonly found in the Pacific Ocean. Loligo is generally considered to be the most tender in texture and as a result, usually the most expensive. Squid flesh is versatile with a mild, sweet flavor and tender, succulent texture. Squid species are used commercially for the production of both tubes and tentacles. This table provides a summary of the exports and imports for the Falkland Islands. And as you can see, the Falkland Islands, surprisingly, is a net exporter. It exports goods with a value of around $257 million per year and imports around $90 million worth of goods which gives the Falkland Islands a positive balance of trade of around $167 million. And the main reason that the Falklands has such a high level of exports is because it signed a joint venture fishing arrangement with Spain because calamari is hugely popular in Spain and Mediterranean Europe. The Falkland Islands themselves may be barren and don't produce anything of any real value. However, the waters surrounding the islands do contain a lot of squid and this is the main reason why the Falkland Islands has a positive balance of trade. Now, in terms of its import partners, not surprisingly, given the history, the UK is the biggest single partner, providing around 50% of all imports. Spain is the next biggest counterparty, providing 28%. We then have Greece, the Netherlands and the Ivory Coast. In terms of the rest of the economy, after fishing, the next biggest industry is sheep farming. Around 80% of all of the land on the Falkland Islands is dedicated to sheep farming. And the islands benefit from the sale of both the meat and the wool. And the third biggest industry on the island is tourism. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because the question of why is the Falkland Islands part of the United Kingdom when it's located around 8,000 miles from the UK and only around 300 miles from Argentina has been something that people all around the world have been asking for a very long time. Logically speaking, it makes absolutely no sense for the UK to have sovereignty over these islands. When you look at a world map, you would either expect the Falkland Islands to be part of Argentina or to be an independent state. Now, as we've discussed in today's video, it's very difficult for small nations to be entirely independent. Unless they've got a wealth of natural resources such as oil or gold, they're not going to generate large amounts of export revenue and therefore it's difficult to become self-sufficient because islands generally have to buy in things like fuel and food to keep everybody alive. So the most obvious solution for the Falklands would have been to be part of Argentina. However, as we've seen in today's video, Argentina really didn't show a lot of interest in terms of populating the islands. They were left uninhabited generally, apart from the odd fishermen or the posting of some soldiers. 
Now, in the late 18th century, a lot of the European countries were running all around the world trying to take over any country that they could land in. And the Falkland Islands didn't miss out on all of this excitement. The French were the first to arrive and establish a settlement, the British then arrived on the islands, and then the Spanish took over the French settlement. So we had three different European superpowers all claiming sovereignty over this small group of islands. However, towards the end of the 18th century, when the Napoleonic Wars were kicking off, all of the European countries lost interest, there wasn't really a great deal of attraction in the islands, and by the end of the century the islands were uninhabited again, and the only time that they really became inhabited on a full-time basis was in 1840. 40, when Scottish settlers came out and formed a permanent settlement. Now at that time no great efforts were made by Argentina to repel the British settlement, which then went on to exist and expand over the next hundred years, and it wasn't until the 1960s that Argentina challenged Britain's sovereignty of the islands. Now at that stage the United Nations got involved, but the problem that Argentina was facing by then was that the inhabitants of the Falkland Islands, who'd been there for over a hundred years, were all of British descent, they all spoke English, they'd set up all of the infrastructure, and so the relationship between the Falkland Islands and the UK was much stronger than the relationship with Argentina. So in terms of the people who lived on the Falkland Islands, they saw themselves as being British and therefore wanted to remain part of Britain. And I think this is probably the key difference for the Falkland Islands versus the rest of the colonial empire. Generally speaking, when Britain and France and Spain and the Dutch were going around colonising countries, they had local inhabitants. So they would go into countries in places like Africa and Asia, establish some form of control, run the country for a number of years, and then at some point there would be an uprising where the local people would say, enough's enough, we're not interested in you telling us what to do anymore, we want to run our own country, please go. And those feelings of revolution and nationalism really brought about the end of colonialism. But the problem that you've got with regards to the Falklands is that there were never any local inhabitants. The islands were uninhabited before the British landed and set up the settlements. So because these islands don't have an indigenous population, we don't have anybody on the island that wants to get rid of the oppressive colonial rulers. In fact, the people who live there are basically descendants of the expats who came from the UK. So they've actually got an affinity with the UK. They actually want to continue being part of Britain. And I think because of all of these factors, the Falklands War in 1982 was unlike any other war that we've seen against colonial rule. Normally you have the indigenous people who are fighting against this oppressive ruler, but in the case of the Falklands, that simply wasn't the case. We had Argentina landing on the islands, trying to take control, and all of the people who lived there did not want them to do that. They didn't want to be taken over by Argentina. They actually saw the British as coming in to save them. So I think where we've got to now is quite a complicated situation, because when you look at the map of the world, it does make sense for the Falkland Islands to be part of Argentina. However, because the British landed there and basically staked their claim, and then populated it with lots of British people and the descendants, the great great grandchildren of those original settlers are still living on the island today. So I think we've gone past the point of returning these islands to Argentina because essentially all of the people who live there who've built all the infrastructure and the culture on the island are basically British. So whilst Argentina are still calling for the islands to be returned to their rule, I think it's extremely unlikely that that will ever happen, because the people of the Falkland Islands just don't see themselves as being Argentinian. So as I said right at the start of this video, the purpose of today was really try to establish why Britain owns the Falkland Islands. And hopefully you've now got a better understanding as to firstly where the Falkland Islands are, secondly how they came about to be inhabited by British people, and thirdly why they're still owned by Britain today. So hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode, you found it useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end, and here's something to put a smile on your face.